presenters have to say. Oh. All right, and, and I know um, Helene recognized several folks uh, to help make this possible, but I also want to add my thanks to the to the Southern Southeastern Partnership for Integrated Biomass Supply Systems, also what we know as the IBIS Project, Southern Region Extension Forestry, of course, NST, North Carolina State University's Extension Forestry, and of course, many others that add their support and cooperation in, in supporting uh, this webinar series. As uh, Helene mentioned, I am Brent Bailey, and I serve as State Activities Coordinator for the 25 by 25 Alliance. And we're a diverse grassroots national alliance of nearly a thousand agriculture, forestry, conservation, business, and environmental organizations. Organizations all working collaboratively to advance the goal of securing 25% of our nation's energy needs from renewable resources by the year 2025. Today's webinar will help you get a better understanding of life cycle analysis, what it is, how it works, and why we use it. Today's webinar will also introduce you to the Open LCA platform and the LCA Commons data entry tool developed by USDA, as well as demonstrate the capability of these tools. The term life cycle analysis or, or life cycle assessment um, is also what we call LCA. Uh, it's becoming a much more frequently used phrase in many industry sectors, including agriculture, forestry, and bioenergy. A life cycle assessment, or as I said just a second ago in LCA, is really the systematic approach of looking at a product complete at a product's complete life cycle, from raw materials to final disposal or utilization. It offers a cradle to grave or well to wheels look at product or production process while accounting for environmental attributes and or its impacts. While LCA concepts have been around for a few decades, interest in their use and applications has ebbed and flowed with the nation's economic performance and what some may say to be a lack of standardized and standardization in LCA applications. However, with the concerns of greenhouse gas influences on climate and consumers' desire for more sustainable goods and services, the LCA has become an important tool for industry and other sectors. With that has emerged LCA best practices as well as basic principles. The LCA, is, as we mentioned, examines the environmental impact of a product by assessing many factors such as raw material acquisition or feedstock development, which can include planning, management, harvesting, and transportation. You could also look at processing, manufacturing, product life, and end-of-life impacts. However, data management, integrity, and interpretation is of the utmost importance, and data must reflect current processes and situations. A, a recent example of LCA data interpretation differences is the Envi Environmental Working Group's recent claim that the life cycle emissions of corn ethanol are greater than those of gasoline. EWG concluded that lowering the ethanol targets under the renewable fuel standard will reduce greenhouse gas emissions. However, a team of greenhouse gas experts, carbon sequestration, and ag economists challenged the scientific methodology of the EWG's claims and found that EWG used what we consider unrealistic assumptions and found errors in their data application. Lately, scientists from Argonne National Lab and the University of Illinois Chicago have applied the latest information from corn and ethanol production practices and techniques and have confirmed that the use of ethanol reduces greenhouse gas emissions. On a per gallon basis, corn ethanol reduces greenhouse gas emissions from anywhere to 19 to 48 percent, while cellulosic ethanol, next generation biofuels, offers an even greater benefit with a 70 to 115 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. The higher LCA value placed on ethanol derived from this scantis could actually make it a carbon negative biofuel. Today, LCAs are helping industries reduce costs, improve performance, achieve sustainability goals, and make more informed decisions. To help us today to, to further delve into the issues around life cycle analysis, its uses, and of course uh, the applications of, of the open source and the data entry tools at USDA, we have uh, three distinguished presenters and, and all experts in their field. Uh, first, I'll introduce you today is the Dr. Jesse Daystar. 
and he is a leader in this area uh, of life cycle assessments for forest biomaterials and currently is the Triangle Life Cycle Assessment as its president. He just completed his PhD. We, you may have recognized his name. We've had Jesse on here before, and now we can proudly call him Dr. Dave Starr. Uh, but he completed his PhD in forest biomaterials focused on the environmental impacts of second-generation biofuel. He's presented his research at many uh, research finding at many, many major conferences um, and at the American Center for Life Cycle Assessment and Advanced Materials for Energy and Green Technology. Um, you can see the rest of his, uh, his, uh, his biography and his achievements on the slide there, but at this time, without uh, taking up further time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Daystar, and just uh, as a reminder, we'll be collecting your questions in the chat box, and, uh, uh, and uh, we'll address the questions at the end of all presentations. Appreciate your time. Um, look forward to a great conversation today, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Jesse. Brent, thank you very much for the kind of introduction, Helene. Uh, thanks for setting all this up today. Can everybody hear me okay? You're good, Jesse. Yeah, we hear you. Great, thank you. All right. So today, as uh, Brent and Helena mentioned, that we're going to discuss uh, OpenLCA, how to use it, and some features amongst uh, with that, as well as the uh, USDA LCA Commons tool and how that interacts. And uh, Peter and Arbuckle and Ezra Khan will be following up uh, the introduction to OpenLCA with their discussion on the LCA Commons tool. So as Brandon mentioned, uh, LCA is a great tool to determine environmental impacts or kind of understand what products uh, infect the environment and in what ways. For instance, the corn versus gasoline, how do we know which one uh, would produce more environmental impacts? And LCA was the answer to that. And within everyday life, we uh, often go to the grocery store or something such as this, a paper, bla paper bag, plastic bag, or a canvas bag. Uh, you know, decisions we make every day can be, you know, have, a, have an impact. So uh, life cycle assessment is a tool which we can determine maybe which one may be better, for instance, canvas or paper or plastic. And there's been studies that, uh, depending upon the assumptions, have found different results. And a lot of it comes down to questions like this, uh, you know, what bag is best and how long would I have to use that perhaps canvas bag to to make it better than using a paper bag or plastic bag once? And these are all questions that LCA can be a great, a great benefit to use to answer these. And interesting, uh, there's been studies on this. In canvas bags, you actually have to use a high number of times. I'm not going to quit this study directly, but uh, a pretty large number of times to be better than, than other ones. So it's really interesting and not always intuitive to what the best environmental answer, the best decision is for the environment. So life cycle assessment is a great tool to, to get at this. So the IBIS project, as uh, as I mentioned already, um, has a goal of um, producing environmentally sustainable production or environmentally sustainable biofuels. And we have to determine, you know, how we're actually doing this. Can we measure this? And, you know, what benefit is there or isn't there? Or is there a better way to do it using certain processes and certain biomass types? So life cycle assessment is our tool and a, a tool in general that we can answer this question. And today's webinar um, kind of aligns well with the three goals of the IVIS project is to create, generate solutions. So a lot of my research has actually been focused on uh, understanding a biomass in the southeast and its environmental impacts and developing tools for that. And also outreach. And OpenLCA is a tool which is uh, freely available and anybody can use. So it's a, a nice way to give a tool and empower people who may not be uh, experts in the field and get people using OpenLCA and just performing LCAs on their research products or any kind of service. And, uh, you know, it's obviously some education here today. I hope you can come away with this with uh, some additional knowledge and perhaps uh, be able to use OpenLCA or at least find the resources needed to, to go further into that. So kind of what to expect today. Uh, I'm going to introduce LCA. Um, Brent did a pretty good job of giving some of the, the background history of that, and that was great. I'm going to give a little bit of a how-to, but not too, not too deep in details. And then we're going to go into the introduction to uh, OpenLCA. Uh, and then further go into uh, demonstrating that you're going to see my screen and I'm going to walk you through some demonstrations of uh, explaining where everything is as well as calculating some results and looking into things in a bit more detail. And then Peter and Ezra are going to talk about the uh, LCA Commons. 
So as Brent mentioned earlier, life cycle assessment is a framework to determine the environmental impacts of product, services, or good. That's kind of a generic uh, explanation, but uh, it can be defined uh, within four different processes, uh, goal and scope, inventory analysis, and impact assessment. And you have the interpretation all throughout this process. And we're going to dive a little bit in more detail in each one of these uh, um, four steps. So defining a goal and scope uh, is a very important part that you've done uh, in the beginning of a study. And it needs to state the intent, what are you trying to determine, how are you going to determine it, um, who's going to be the audience, and perhaps the reason for the study. Additionally, it's really important to define the functional unit. Are you looking at a gallon gasoline, a, a megajoule gasoline, or perhaps ethanol? It's important to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. For instance, uh, gasoline, if you compare it, a uh, gallon of gasoline to a gallon of ethanol, they have different energy densities and they're not really equivalent. So typically, one megajoule of gasoline is compared to a megajoule of ethanol. Additionally, it's important to determine or explicitly state what you're considering inside the system boundaries. So are you including production of the biomass or are you including the, the burning of the fuel or are you stopping somewhere maybe before the burning of the fuel, which is called cradle to gate. Uh, a lot of times, cradle to grave is the, the holistic approach, but you can gain some value from looking at cradle to gate if you have similar products and the, the end of life is all the same. And uh, within the scope as well, you need to determine how you're going to collect the data and, and perhaps what cutoffs and different things that uh, different processes you're going to use to manage this large amount of data. Just to kind of show the importance of defining the goal and scope, it's just really um, interesting to show this slide where you have the, uh, there's a bunch of studies here that have determined the greenhouse gas emission reductions compared to gasoline. And you have some that say that you can get a 114% reduction to, to one on the bottom right that indicates a 93% worse than gasoline. And a lot of this variation, uh, it can be attributed to the goal, scope, and system boundaries. Uh, things like time frames, uh, when, how long you're attributing land use change emissions to. And uh, the one on the bottom right is a search intro at all. It's a very um, uh, well-known paper that uh, looked at land use change and attributed the, the greenhouse gas emissions only over a 20-year period. And that was a, um, a methodology that makes it, obviously, a lot worse than uh, gasoline. So you can really dictate the results to an extent, but um, it's really important to understand and explicitly state um, your assumptions in this and what you're, um, how you're approaching this. So the next step is uh, life cycle inventory. And that's developing flow diagrams, collecting data from your process. Perhaps you have a, a facility you can go measure the emissions from and the uses of chemicals uh, and transportation distances. This type of data would go into your life cycle inventory. It will also include perhaps like how much water was used or how much CO2 came out of your stack. So that's, uh, this is really where the meat of the work is within life cycle assessment. You, it can be very difficult to either collect data from uh, an industry or a company or if you're doing something that is uh, not necessarily in practice yet, such as uh, biofuels reduction from cellulose, uh, you might have to use a process simulation. And that can take a lot of time, but the results from that are what's going to inform um, the LCA overall and how this might, these products might impact the environment. Next step, after we have the chemicals we need and the emissions we have to the environment, uh, we can determine or start to calculate how these different materials impact the environment. Uh, and so within the LCI, you might have a life cycle inventory. You might have hundreds and hundreds of material flows and different chemicals. And uh, impact assessment can reduce these to maybe five to ten, uh, ten different things that you can, ten different numbers that would indicate uh, how this product or system impacts the environment, which uh, can definitely help people understanding the data. There's a, a few different steps within the impact assessment. Um, one of the first ones is classification, and that is matching the emission with the type of impact to the environment. So on the left, you have the pollutant or emission, and then the environmental effect on the right. And some, some pollutants or emissions affect uh, more than one category. Another step is the characterization. Uh, some of you might know that carbon dioxide has a, um, has a potential to um, provide an insulating effect to the environment. And methane also does, but methane is actually a lot stronger or it has more insulating effect than CO2. So typically what is done is the methane is transferred over to CO2 equivalents, which uh, does a few things for us. It gives us a common unit that we can measure 
uh, all greenhouse gases upon, which is convenient, and you can look at one number instead of a whole bunch of different numbers, as well as it, uh, it relates how this, uh, this methane compares to carbon dioxide, which is convenient. Um, this conversion or characterization step, the number, the 25 number, um, there is some controversy around that, and it can change depending upon your um, input assumptions of time frames, and that's interesting to note. So I've uh, given a quick introduction to LCA. I didn't go through the, the weighting aspects of uh, impact assessment. That's another step, but um, today we're just going to focus more on the first part there. So next, we're going to get into the introduction of open LCA. So understanding the interactions between software and data is very important. Uh, it can be kind of tricky because there's a lot of different software types out there, and um, understanding how these interactions happen, it, it can be difficult. So the software is uh, more like, for instance, if you're going to build a deck for your house, perhaps, the, the tools are the, like the hammer and such are the tools such as open LCA. And the lumber is the data. And it's very important to have quality data, meaning uh, you know, the lumber, whatever, is it's very important. It's got to be of good quality. And it's only your model or your tools can't really make a good, a good study without the good data. So the data is very important. And the tools as well um, are important for especially doing this in a timing manner. You can do LCAs and Excel to an extent, but managing all that data can be very, very tricky. And this is where LCA software uh, shines. It has the ability to manage more data um, without having to make the user um, struggle through that as much. So here's a slide of just some of the uh, LCA softwares in existence today. Open LCA, Semipro, Gabby, Gree, Umberto, Qantas. You know, there's a lot of different uh, types of uh, software, and they all have some uh, nice benefits and uh, some features that um, other ones may not have. Uh, I've worked mostly in Open LCA and Cement Pro, and I've worked in Gabby a bit and uh, in Aragorn's uh, Greet model. And those are all really useful. Um, the other ones are as well. But uh, the software, if you lay that on top of that, is a whole another suite of different types of software, such as EcoEvent and uh, the Digital Commons. There's a lot of data out there, and understanding how it all interacts and, and which tools can use what is, is important as well. We're going to get at that today. So. Here's just a, a list of what I just mentioned there in the, in the um, slides. And I'm going to point out that open LCA is like Green Delta. And uh, US LCI is NREL or USDA, I think, at this point. And there's still a lot of different databases that um, can interact with these tools. Within the open LCA framework, or just uh, really a LCA software, here's a graphic that kind of describes how the tool leverages previous studies, for instance, the, this right here is a database full of other LCA studies that a user can use um, the tool to uh, call upon that. And if you want to know what the impact of sulfuric acid is, it's already been determined, and you can pull that into your study. And the process inventory is perhaps how many kilograms of um, sulfuric acid you need per megajoule of fuel. So you put that data in to so get an LCI, and then you can do an impact assessment using the impact methods, which are also in the, the tool. And then that will give you an environmental impact on the right. So there's a couple different types of data sets there like that have uh, other LCA studies compiled for your use as an LCA practitioner. EcoInvent is a uh, process-based ones are EcoInvent, Gabby, the Digital Commons, the LCI, and the ELCD. There's some additional ones that are uh, input and output LCA, which is more based on financial data, which is uh, OpenIO and some other ones there, and the multi-regional data sets as well. There's a few things that are very important to the, to the data compatibility, um, being able to work between different programs uh, and perhaps uh, making sure that the, the boundary systems are correct for your study. Um, transparency is also very important, being able to track back where these numbers came from so the user doesn't have to take this for granted. And some, some software databases and programs are better at that, some are worse. Uh, so the transparency is very important. You can go back and maybe use part of their data and update other parts uh, more specific to what you are doing as a practitioner within your study. Availability is another big one, too. Uh, Gabby and EcoInvent both have a large, large list of uh, components and chemicals and materials that you can use to create your product. And the LCA Digital Commons is um, doing a great job at compiling agriculture stuff based in the US. And that's something else to mention, too. 
I'll, uh, the databases on the right here, Gabby and Ecovan, it's largely based in Europe, European numbers. So oftentimes you need to update some things to make it more applicable to the United States if you're here doing your LCA or um, manipulate some things. So the Digital Commons is great because it's uh, based in the United States and we have uh, data more, which is more applicable to here. Another thing to mention is there's a lot of different formats for data. Uh, there's Ecosfold, Ecosfold 1 for Simmer Pro, and Ecosfold 2, which is a newer database. Uh, Ecovent 3 is based in ILCD and CSV. So there's a lot of compatibility um, issues with uh, transferring files from one program to another. And that's uh, something that OpenLCA shines at is sharing um, models and, and databases between uh, different users because you only you do not need a license to have the software. You just need to have uh, rights to the, the data, such as uh, EcoInvent. So we can very easily share that. As well as uh, OpenLCA can actually bring in data from uh, a lot of different formats, pretty much all these listed right here. So uh, it can be taken data from Gabby or Simipro, um, pretty much anything. You can actually uh, use a great tool by Green Delta here. Uh, Green Delta, I forgot to mention earlier, is the creator of uh, OpenLCA, and they support it and release new um, new new editions uh, frequently. Uh, with 1.4 edition is the most recent, and they also created a tool called OpenLCA Nexus. This Nexus allows you to search, kind of like Google, for um, for anything such as electricity or chemical, and it will search through all the common databases. This is very helpful because uh, before this, it was really difficult to to search through the different databases from one place. It took a lot of time, but now it's all listed. And if you just need one piece of data, you can actually purchase that from Green Delta, and it will be already formatted in the correct way for OpenLCA. So it's a very seam seamless process, and they've done a great job at uh, bringing the availability to the, to the user. So um, that's a great tool. Additionally, if you're going into uh, using the, the software, some great resources online. Uh, OpenLCA.org is where you can go to find these. You can download it at the link there or from the OpenLC website. There's also a good bit of documentation as a wiki. So you can go through there and find tutorials and different information. And there's also a forum where you can ask questions and get some pretty, uh, usually a timely response to that if you're having issues. So today's uh, demonstration, I'm going to give you a little slight, a quick orientation to the program, uh, talk about some of the different parts, elements of the OpenLC program, and then also um, Show you, show you how to get results and how to interpret that and discuss just a little bit how to transfer data from one um, file or one person to another. So with that, I'm going to switch from the PowerPoint over to sharing my screen. So when you open uh, open LCA, you have a screen such as this. You have a welcome page and you have a database over here. You actually have to um, connect to this. It'll look like this when you first open, so you have to activate the database. And then you'll see a little file structure over here. And uh, this is similar to file structures on a computer, such as a Windows computer where you have different folders. And there's a few different things. And I'm going to start with just uh, the bottom one here. Actors are people such as myself or any scientist or person using the program making data. Sources, uh, perhaps literature. And unit groups are things such as uh, mass, units of mass, and things like that. Flows are describing materials that are coming from one process to another, or perhaps materials that are coming from the environment, such as water, that are going into a process which might be used to make beer or another product, anything such as that. And so flows connect processes from processes as well. And a process is something that will change a flow or a material into another type of form and then another product. So if you're taking, um, for instance, uh, biofuels, you're taking some biomass, maybe perhaps some forest res residues, as well as some chemicals and enzymes, and changing that into a fuel, that would be a process. And uh, this folder describes the different impact assessment methods. There's quite a few here, and uh, it, the OpenLCA program allows you to choose different different types depending on your goal and scope and where you are. Perhaps the CRACI is a US based and eco indicators is a European based uh, impact assessment method. And you can open these and see what's in those too. The product system is a 
the calculator or what you would upload your processes into, and that's where you actually calculate results, and I'll show you that in a bit, but I like to think of it as like the calculator where you enter your data and it generates and crunches the numbers. And a project is something that's designed to compare more than one product system, so you can get some early results and kind of see uh, how two things compare within the program. So let's go ahead and uh, open up a process here. Uh, this is the EcoInvent database as well as the, the version 2.2. Uh, there's a newer one out, the EcoInvent 3, and OpenLCA is capable of that, is now capable of using that uh, with the 1.4 edition, which you can see up here. Um, so let's get into a, a process here. Since this is IBIS project, we're pretty interested in um, biomass and, and energy. So I'm going to pull up some uh, some biomass data here. We have you know, quite a lot, just to kind of demonstrate you the extensiveness of this database. It's got heat, um, uh, biogas, electricity, all from biomass and cogeneration. Um, fuels, uh, we've done some LCA studies on biofuels, um, but so has the eco event, and there's quite a few here. You have like um, palm fruit bunches, and, and uh, I was looking at sweet sorghum earlier, and I might pull it up right here. So if you double click on one of these, um, records here, uh, the process, you get um, another window come up in your navigation area, and this is kind of what it looks like as you, you come into it. So you have a name in the top, then you have some description about it, uh, perhaps, you know, how much it is, where it's produced, how it's produced, and then the documentation, and that's very important, as well as uh, the location, as you have down here, um, some sources, and that's, that's really great. So it's kind of the background to, to the the mini or the LCA that was done before it was entered into this. And within the inputs and outputs tab at the bottom here, you can see the different materials that went into making this this biofuel. Uh, the ones that have the gears are ones that come from other processes. And the ones that have this little um, stick figure with little balls on the ends, which is represented like an atom or a molecule, is something that comes from the environment. It's like a resource and air, and there's different types of categories of um, flows here. And remember, flows connect processes. So there is a disposal process that a flow is coming out of and into this process. And you can list the uh, units, flow property, and also the amount. And uh, with the EcoInvent database, there's also uncertainty. Uh, and there's data surrounding that, which allows you to do a Monte Carlo uncertainty analysis in this program as well, which gives you better data to understand, better data, which allows you to more understand the probability of a, of a product being better than other, or maybe how certain you are uh, within a certain range of um, your results. And at the bottom here, we have outputs. And uh, there's one output at the bottom, or one output that is designated as the um, the, the particular product of, of interest here, and it's a sweet sorghum. And uh, that's what everything is more or less measured by. And uh, there's also uh, a lot of other products sometimes that come out of this. Uh, there's a few other uh, tabs here, for instance, the uh, administrative and modeling validation and parameters. The parameters are interesting. You can, uh, it's a higher level uh, feature within OpenLCA. It gives you the ability to make some very flexible models that can uh, be changed uh, very quickly altogether. Um, so if we want to understand the, or determine or calculate the environmental impacts of this, we can create a product system by clicking this button right here. Um, so I'm going to uh, click that button, which I just did. It's selected already the, the material there, and then I'm going to hit finish. It'll take a few moments to create the, uh, to compile all the different processes together. This used to take a, a much longer in the 1.3.4 OpenLCA version. The, the 1.4 has uh, increased the performance quite a lot, which is a, a great benefit from a usability standpoint. So here, uh, this is called a product system, and if you remember, I showed you that where that is located before, and that's up here, product systems. So here we have in distillery, and that's the one we were just looking at. And we're looking at kilograms and the target amount, and we can calculate uh, from here the environmental impact. But before we do that, I always like to look at the model graph, and that makes sure that you can see where everything is connected up. So here we have sweet sorghum in distillery. And we have all these different processes or materials that it took to make that material or the distillery. And you can see there's uh, quite a few here. So 
ethanol fermentation that blows up into quite a few and you can go to diesel burn and it gets quite complicated. So as you might imagine, there's hundreds and hundreds of connections here, oftentimes circling back onto themselves with different processes. So it's a lot of data and a lot of stuff to track and that's why LCA software really shines. Whereas doing things so would be much more difficult. So once you've uh, made sure everything is connected up, you can hit the calculate button. And uh, I'm going to do an analysis now, but we have the option of regional LCA, IA, which is the regional lives, life cycle impact assessment. And that's a new feature that's experimental and very unique to open LCA. There's also the Monte Carlo simulation, which will give you an idea of your uncertainty. So if you're going to calculate your results here, I'm going to pick uh, the Tracy impact assessment method here. And uh, it doesn't have any waiting, so let me hit calculate. It's going to take just a few moments. And again, this is much quicker than the older versions. While, that, while that's loading, Jesse, um, this question is pretty relevant mm -hmm. here. Does the LCA software help to select the most cost-effective alternatives? Is there that capability? Cost-effective from which standpoint? Uh, there's some, something called total, there, there's some things in here that can uh, approach that, but from a processing standpoint, usually uh, it's not enough alone, but it could be a tool used to help inform that sort of analysis. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, calculate the uh, um, the product system here, you, ha you, you end up on a, a screen such as this, and you have flow contributions at first, and you can track different flows uh, through the system. Uh, I typically like to look at the environmental contribution, so it breaks it down to different impact categories, such as uh, global warming impact. And you can see that uh, where different, where the uh, emissions or the impact actually came from. But there's actually a, some other tabs in here that give you a better view of that. But before we're getting that, we can go to this other tab, which is inventory results, and this will list all the inputs it's from the environment uh, that it took. It's quite a few, as you can tell, and all the emissions to the environment. Each one of those will have an impact. And that's the life cycle inventory. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure we're clear here. Um, so what we're actually doing right now with the sweet sorghum is to see the environmental impact if we were to produce fuel at a refinery. Is that what we're looking at right yes. now? Yes. Okay. And I'll be clear. Yeah, this would be something along the lines of a cradle to gate, meaning we're not burning the fuel yet. So this is just the production of the uh, fuel. And okay. uh, this is more of a demonstration purpose, but uh, it is really interesting to look at the whole cradle of grave. Yeah, it's definitely very um, detailed. So I, I was getting lost there, so I guess we're just kind of looking at, uh, you said cradle to gate, if we're going to use sweet sorghum as a feedstock in the distillery to make fuel. Yes. Okay, great. Yes, thank you, Helene, for kind of putting it into context there. Yeah, so the inventory is quite large, but maybe you want to look at fewer impacts. And here we have the results yeah, broken down to global warming and certification and a few others here. So it's much easier to look at. Another thing that LCA is really great at is understanding uh, or helping find where the big players are or what's important to the, uh, what's driving the environmental performance. So here a contribution tree can be a very useful tool where if you look at this, it shows you the different processes. I might have to scoot this over. You can see the sorghum um, is where it's 43% of the impact comes from. And you can just dive down into understanding uh, diammonium phosphate is a pretty large player there and which things, uh, which parts of the process actually contribute the most. So that's a nice feature to really figure out what components of your process, where is the emission, where are the emissions coming from, and maybe where should you focus to uh, decrease these emissions. Um, so that's a kind of a rundown of what you can see. There's some other really neat uh, analysis tools that you can look at. Um, but if you want to compare gas versus ethanol, you could use a product, a project, which will have, look something along these lines. And uh, I've already made one here for time's sake. And uh, let's see here. Maybe that's not working. Uh, you can add two different variants here. Um, and do this one right here and another one gasoline. And this is totally uh, fictitious. Uh, we need to you know, make sure we're comparing the correct things in the right way. But just to show you how the, the feature works, you can hit calculate. And it'll run in the background. It'll run for a moment and give you some results. I guess while I was running, i um, take another question here. So um, does it do cost and benefit analysis? 
the software. Uh, cost and benefit analysis in terms of the environment, yeah, it does have a feature uh, which addresses some of that. Uh, if you're just looking to understand the profitability of the supply chain you know, or some things like that, maybe not as much, but uh, yeah, it has uh, has some abilities. We can talk about that perhaps after. Right. Um, so here's some results. You can see that the uh, the red, which I think was um, gasoline, is has a higher impact or higher flow. Uh, of that feature, but if you're looking, um, yeah, we're just actually set flows here. I didn't select the process, uh, didn't select a impact assessment method, so we just look at flows. So if you were to do that, you would select one of these um, impact methods. But in efforts to give Peter um, and Ezra some time to talk about their project, I'm going to uh, move along here and just mention uh, mention how to get this uh, data from your your program into Excel, because I know a lot of us work in Excel and you need to have this data. So you can actually click this export to Excel and I'll take all these different tabs and put it in Excel allowing you to ma manipulate it further and make your own graphs or publication which is very convenient. So it's really easy to get the data out of Excel. And perhaps you want to share some custom models you made with a colleague for review or just whatever your purpose is. There's, there's a lot of ways you can do that and um, you can do that by clicking file and export and you can export processes, impact methods, equals bold. There's a lot of different file formats which you can export. And that's going to be part of something that's important to the uh, LCA Commons, which Peter and Ezra will talk about next. Um. Oh. Okay. So I've more or less given you a quick run through the uh, program here and uh, just kind of give you a few last. Uh, Things to remember: It's a open LCA is a robust LCA tool. It's very comparable to any other ones out there. It's free and open source, so you don't have to pay yearly subscriptions or a large licensing fee such as others. Um, however, you do have to pay for data uh, unless it's uh, free data such as LCA Commons. And it also enables a higher level of collaboration uh, with increased model sharing because you can very easily share. You don't have, to have multiple licenses of the software. And it's compatible with most uh, data sets, and the OpenLCA Nexus is great. And it's also uh, used by USLCA, USDA to upload LCA Commons data. And if you're interested in training, please contact me. We can uh, set something up or have an um, uh, online training or in person, and we can help you through the process of getting used to the program. And with that, I'd like to thank you and uh, turn the reins over to uh, Peter Arbuckle. Hey Jesse, thanks a lot. This is Brent Bailey here. I, I appreciate your your detailed overview of uh, the, the LCA activity and the work you're doing. Uh, a lot of good tools and features there, and uh, while there while there is definitely some um, uh, some complexity to it all, I think uh, uh, becoming more familiar with the tool that you have there can certainly help open some doors and create some efficiencies in analyzing uh, processes. But I want to go ahead now and introduce uh, Mr. Pete Arbuckle and, and Dr. Ezra Khan. They'll be joining us up from uh, USDA's National Ag Laboratory, I mean Ag uh, National Agricultural Library. Uh, and they'll be joining us to discuss the role of USDA in developing the, the strong LCA platforms. Mr. Arbuckle works on the LCA Commons project at the USDA National Agricultural Library. The LCA Commons is an initiative to gather and disseminate life cycle data that represent United States agriculture. Prior to joining the National Agricultural Library, he worked for USDA's NIFA, incorporating life cycle thinking into USDA extramural research grant program for bioenergy and bioproducts. And also joining uh, Mr. R. Barkle will be Dr. Ezra Khan, who received his PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Washington with a focus on modeling uncertainty and life cycle assessment. Since then, he serves as a technical information specialist at the Knowledge Services Division at USDA, National Ag Library, where his primary responsibilities has been the USDA LCA Commons. Um, Peter, um, Ezra, thank you for joining us today and look forward to your comments. Thank you, Brent, and thanks everybody for the opportunity to to present here today. Helene suggested that there might be a few people out there who don't know what the National Agricultural Library is, and 
while while I'm shocked that that might be the case, um, <laughs> I'll go through and I'll start with an introduction to the library. We are we are located in Beltsville, Maryland. We're co-located with the Agricultural Research Service Beltsville Research Area, and we're organized under the Agricultural Research Service. We were established in 1862 to acquire and diffuse useful information on subjects connected with agriculture and rural development. And recently, a um, little over a year ago, the library established a knowledge services division. And Ezra and I were the first two hires in the knowledge services division. And the mission of this, of this division is to acquire, preserve, and describe scientific data sets and, do, and transform and develop visualization tools, uh, data, trans, transform data and create data visualization tools where applicable. The NAL is a really great platform for these activities in the federal government because it's really closely aligned with our mission, that is the data management and data archiving and warehousing activities. Uh, database and, and related software projects that occur in federal laboratories often, often fail in the long term because funding inevitably shifts and when funding shifts, things that are a little bit outside your mission tend to be cut before other things. And so it's really nice that our, our, our mission, this project is, is in collecting life cycle data related to agriculture or and when I say agriculture, I mean agricultural products. Um, it really falls nicely within our mission and, if, and we feel very, very comfortable that this will persist uh, now and into the future. Next slide. Okay. I'll now describe the, the concept a little bit. The, the LCA Commons exists to enable collaboration and data sharing within the LCA community, but also the agricultural product or even the forest product community that are doing work for LCA. As Jesse said in his presentation, the life cycle inventory portion of a life cycle assessment is really the the labor intensive part of the work in, in gathering all of the data that you need. And our mission then is to have a place, is to improve the information related to agricultural or, or also forest based products um, in an effort to, to support people doing life cycle assessments. You can imagine the bioenergy commons, or I'm sorry, the LCA commons as a kind of a data-centered community of practice. It's by no means, I know that that term community of practice means something explicit in related to extension, um, but it's, we're really focused on, on creating a place where people can share, can upload and download and share information and data. We're not simply um, focused, we're not limiting ourselves to data, but we're also developing tools that can help the community translate and transform data really to facilitate data interoperability. And this is, this is a really core idea for us, and this is why we, why we use OpenLCA in our application. And I'll describe more about that. Next slide. How do I? There we go. One more. OK, no, one more. OK, thank you. Um, Sorry about that. So as I said, it's, it, is, it is our mission to disseminate data that represent U.S. production for the use in life cycle modeling for farm operations, policy, and commerce. And you'll see that I focus more on farm now than I do forest operations. One, because those are the data that we have developed thus far. And two, is we, we collaborate closely with the National uh, Renewable Energy Laboratory that runs the US LCI database and, and the forest operations folks quorum, they, they've done a, a ton of great work in life cycle assessment for forest, forest operations and forest based bioenergy that, um, and, and they use the US LCI database to host their data. Um, and so, and so the idea is, as Brent described earlier, the Environmental Working Group came out with a study, or you've probably heard of there's various initiatives in Europe to 
to incorporate environmental attributes into trade considerations. Our, our mission is to make sure that when policymakers or groups informing policy or, in, or international trade organizations are doing life cycle assessment, it's our mission to make sure that the information they're using to represent the United States production is solid. And so our database is a collection of unit processes that represent US, United States production. And a unit process is the smallest portion of the production system for which original data are collected when performing a life cycle assessment. You can envision this perhaps um, in, the, you know, in, a, in, a, in a timber system or a lumber system as, say, the sawing, sawing a tree, hauling a tree, and processing a tree could be three unit processes, for example. And we've begun, we've begun with commodity crops, but we continue to add data from other segments of agriculture, uh, including animal agriculture, specialty crops, and also bioenergy. We are anticipating um, from the, the NIFA grants that have, the NIFA bioenergy grants awarded over the last few years, we're anticipating that much of this bioenergy data will be, life cycle information will be submitted. We've just recently, two weeks ago, in fact, released a submission application that will enable, enable folks to submit data to the LCA Commons. And we're actually, we started working with um, one of the NIFA CAP grants, Bioenergy CAP grants, was from the University of Washington, and we've already started working with them to submit some of their, some of their life cycle information. And we are happy to work with anybody who's interested in submitting data. And with that, I'm going to go, I'm going to, um, our website is uh, www.lcacommons.gov, and I'm going to do a quick, a quick demonstration of this, um, of our website, and just show you show you the way our data, data exists, how it relates to OpenLCA, and then show you the submission, a little bit about the submission application. Can everybody see my Yes, my, you're good to go. My screen? Okay, thanks, Elaine. So this is our home page, and our home page, we're getting ready to actually overhaul our, our home page, but the home page will be, uh, you know, like every other home page, an opportunity for, to, to create a community around lifecycle information. We're going to revise it to include things like, like updates when data are submitted to update, update, provide updates on the website, but also send messages to, to our listserv. And this is where you enter the database. And as you can see, the database right now is, it's, we have a number of, of unit processes, 536 unit processes associated with agriculture, forestry, and fishing. Right now it's just agriculture, but, but we've categorized our, our data with ISIC codes, which are, which are consistent with NAICS codes. And basically any, any, any type of data that falls within a, an ISIC or NAICS categorization can be submitted to the Commons. To download data and to submit data, you must sign in or register if you haven't already. The only thing we ask for when you register is your email address. You go in and you enter your email address, which is your new username, and you create a password for yourself. And you log in, and logging in gives you the, gives you the opportunity to download. And as you can see, if you want to, say, look at, look at a, a unit process for, this is corn grain in, in the year 2000 in Nebraska, you can see, if you remember from Jesse's presentation, that, that our, our metadata tabs are directly represented, uh, or direct, or Similar to OpenLCA, this is what we have done is we have in, we have created an instance of OpenLCA, and we're using the OpenLCA data store as our database. And we and this and the LCA Commons is 
right now just a projection of the OpenLCA data store onto the web. And I'll tell you a few reasons why we, why we did that. Um, and so you can see that we're focused, we're heavily focused here on metadata and in providing, in releasing lifecycle data on the web, it's when people submit data to us, it's not for us to say whether the data are right or wrong, but it's to, it's to judge whether the metadata describe exactly what are in the data. And you can see here that here are the, the technosphere flows. And these are, these, these are, um, this model based directly reflects what Jesse demonstrated. So you can return to the results list. You can add here. You can add unit processes to your cart, and then go to the download the cart. And you'll see those unit processes are then in your cart, and you can download in multiple formats. Right now, we we just have the EcoSpold and the ILCD formats, which are the major formats. But as Jesse said, uh, uh, OpenLCA has added some nice features, and recently in the 1.4 release. Um, uh, EcoSpool version 2 and an Excel download capability. And so if you're interested in downloading data, you select which format, you download the data, and you receive an email with instructions on that will basically, you'll receive an email that where you, that where you download the data through the email. Alternatively, to submit data, Um, you s select the, sub the submit data tab, and it goes to to our submissions portal that where we've developed a number of guidance documents uh, that we call data requirements, data formatting, and nomenclature guidelines, metadata guidelines, and a description of our peer review process. All of the data submitted to the Commons will be peer reviewed by one to three one to three uh, subject matter experts. The, again, the idea is not so much that they're judging the results of what's, what's submitted in the unit process, but simply that, simply that the metadata, the metadata submitted created a clear picture for the user of how the data can or should be used. And it's really and it's up to the user to decide what, what data are appropriate for their study. I'll show you the, the formatting and data guidelines. One of the reasons we use OpenLCA, we ask people to, regardless of what software or format they've used to, to develop their, their life cycle assessment, in submitting unit processes to the Commons, we ask them to import it into OpenLCA because that's the framework that the Commons is based on. They imported it into OpenLCA and edit in OpenLCA and then export it in the ILCD format. It will it will prove to to ingest into the Commons more smoothly than than if it were submitted in say EcoSpold or um, another format. And so right now we're just accepting EcoSpold and ILCD, but we strongly encourage people to to submit data in ILCD. Um, and here there's some information on how to structure the names of the flows and units and categories of the data so that so that one, it ingests smoothly, but two, the objective, our major objective is that data are interoperable. And so when, when somebody submits data to us, we want people to be able to download it and use it effectively with the data that are, that exist in the public. Jesse, for example, Eco, Eco Invent, as Jesse, Jesse I have described a quick, earlier. Um, just kind of clarifying question. Um, so EcoSpold is a format, is that a software? Or format that works in a software. I'm kind of. I'm just a little lost on EcoSpool. E Eco, so hi, this is Ezra at the library. EcoSpool and ILCD. These are XML formats, so they are technically they are not software specific. They're because they're XML. They, they sort of stand on their own, but they are associated with particular software packages um, in a sort of an ad hoc fashion. So SEMA Pro is associated with um, so Schema Pro distributes EcoInvent. Um, when you buy the software, you're also buying a license for EcoInvent. And EcoSpold is the EcoInvent version of the format, of, uh, of their version of LCA format. 
Gabby is another example of a software tool, and they use a different format, um, ILCD, as their as their native file format. But technically, these the formats themselves are not they don't have to be software specific, and they're they've been designed to be um, interchangeable in this using XML. And OpenLCA you can can read okay, both, great. Thank both you. types. And lastly, so this is our um, yes. So, so <laughs> I apologize. I have we have a little glitch. Our our programmer changed my status on the database a couple hours ago, and I'm now he's. So when I log in with with my name, I'm an editor. But but as a submitter, um, as a as a submitter, when you when you log in and you submit, you'll see you'll see a a tab at the top called submit data, and we have a very brief form that asks a handful of a handful of questions. And allows you to upload your XML files and provide provide us with suggested reviewers and comments. Um, and that was with that. I know we're running short on time to wrap it up. But this the OpenLCA to tie it back to to Jesse's presentation with this. Our application of OpenLCA is we're not we're not providing any any analytical capabilities with OpenLCA, but we're using the we're using the the capabilities of OpenLCA because it has tools that foster data exchange and interoperability, and this is what we're hoping. This is the platform that we're using to help the community share data. With that, I'll I'll leave it uh, for Brent. If there's any questions, or you want to thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate everyone participating and, and the information you shared. I know a lot of Good questions that have been popping up on the uh, in the chat box there. Uh, given the time we have, Helene, I'll just go ahead and turn on you and and I think you've been collecting the most pertinent questions in the time we have, and hopefully we can cover them all. And I'm going to let you uh, go forth now and and offer them to the to the fellows there. Sure, thank you, Brent, and uh, thank you, Peter, Ezra, and Jesse. Uh, what a great presentation. Um, I've learned a lot. I'm ready to go tackle it and dive in and see those models because it's very interesting. Um, just not even having an LCA background, I, I find it very intriguing. Um, some of the uh, questions I have, um, I guess, are more for, uh, I guess, a different type of model. Like, a, um, I know the cost-benefit analysis model is mentioned and also a return on investment model. So I guess, um, Jesse and, and Peter and Ezra, if you want to chime in, um, I guess how capable is open LCA in doing some other kind of um, analysis, maybe business model um, analysis? I'll chime in initially, and maybe uh, Peter could follow up. Uh, LCA, or open LCA, is not really designed to do a financial analysis. Uh, I've used it in conjunction with my own financial analysis, uh, which I usually perform in Excel, because they oftentimes require a lot of similar data, such as how much chemical is needed and other aspects. So they work really well together, but OpenLCA will not do a financial analysis such as uh, calculate return on investment, net present value, or IRR. It doesn't, um, it's not capable of doing that. And uh, I hope that answers the question. Does uh, Peter or anybody else want to chime in on that? Yeah, I, that, was, that was a good answer. OpenLCA, I mean, it does have a new capability in terms of characterizing life cycle costs that I'm actually not very familiar with. but. But yeah, you're right. It doesn't do cost-benefit analysis or um, any type of financial analysis, like you were saying. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the other question is, um, who is your University of Arkansas contact that you're working with? And this is for Peter and Ezra. We work with uh, Greg, Dr. Greg Toma and okay, Dr. Great. Marty Matlock. And then I guess if um, maybe someone from the webinar wanted to follow up with you, they can just email you. Is that okay? Okay, great. Yeah, uh, the absolutely. other question um, I have is, 
are you uh, working or familiar with the Washington, um, or for the Washington CAP project? Do you have connections with the Louisiana State University? And I'm not, I do not know what the acronym is, but it's SUBI CAP project. The, the LSU CAP? Um, no, not, not directly. No, we haven't been talking to anybody on the LSU CAP, but we'd be happy to. I mean, okay, great. Um, another question okay. is, while we still have a little bit of time here, um, who is working on the forestry data for the, uh, I'm not sure, it doesn't really specify, but I'm, I'm guessing maybe um, for the commons? Yeah, well, so I so I always forget the, this acronym, but CORIM, C-O-R-R-I-M, I'm sure you got a lot of folks on the phone know what that means, but CORIM's been doing LCA for years, um, and they do really good work, and um, they have been, they submit their data to the U.S. LCI database. Does that, did, can somebody help me out with the CORIM acronym? Yes, it's um, the... Uh, Consortium for Research on Renewable and Industrial Materials, and uh, a lot of my master's work was actually uh, focused, or was actually funded by Quorum, and I think some of that data may have made it into the uh, U.S. LCI database. Right. Thanks. Oops. Sorry, I was trying to share the um, Quorum with everyone. Um, one last question we have here is uh, the formats that are available for the LCA Commons. Could you repeat those, please? So we, pr we, we would like to, they're available for download right now. You can download data in format called ILCD and another form format called Ecospold version 1. And we're working on, on implementing an Excel and Ecospold version 2 download. In terms of uploading data, we prefer data in ILCD format because ILCD format captures the, the depth of metadata that we'd like to collect. Okay, great. And I do want to uh, mention everyone that this um, presentation is being recorded. Um, so you could always go back whenever you need to um, in the archived um, RNG webinar portal and view this um, session. Um, and also, I will be posting the uh, presentation in a PDF format on on the, uh, the home page where you joined um, joined this more or this afternoon. And questions keep coming, and uh, we were allotted um, an hour and fifteen minutes. So I'm gonna keep plugging away at the questions. Um, one of them is you mentioned that training online slash individual is available. Uh, what is the cost associated with that? Hi, yeah. So the training comes in several different options, uh, depending upon what you're trying to do, just to get introduced, help set up, or if you're trying to have a one-on-one -on -one session or maybe a group session. So it all depends on what we're trying to accomplish, and and perhaps if you're academic, you could lose a, uh, some reduced rate for that. So if you'd like to learn more, uh, please just email me, and we'll work something out uh, with you. And uh, if you have any more questions, um, I'll, let you know. I'll answer those, too. OK, great. And Jesse, if they, people just have a question on maybe something like, what does this flow process mean, or you know, something basic, they can feel free to email you as well. Yes, I'll entertain uh, more questions of something basic. Yeah, I'll certainly uh, help you through a, few thing, through a few things, or at least point you in the right direction. Uh, there's a lot of resources online that uh, give a great explanation, but I can help connect you with, uh, with what you need to know. Great. Thank you. Um, don't see any more questions, but uh, please uh, note that there, um, all the presenters are, are willing to uh, take any questions you have. Please email them. Um, also, you can email me, too, um, if you have any questions as well. Just put up the quorum site if anyone's interested in that. If they want to use that link there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, and close the session. And I want to thank everyone for participating. This is a very informative webinar. I've learned so much on this webinar. It's unbelievable. 
there's so much data out there, and you know, this free open source software is just amazing. I mean, it just cuts so much time in, in half, especially if you're looking for um, environmental impact assessments or for the, for the life cycle uh, assessments. Excuse me. Um, again, thank you, uh, Brent, for hosting. Um, thank you, Jesse, Peter, and Ezra. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, recording will be offered um, on the, the forestrywebinars.net um, webinars page. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, um, please join um, our email subscription list if you wanted to um, find out about upcoming webinars in this series. Um, the series is focused on advanced biofuels, um, particularly in the southeastern United States. So with that, Brent, I'm going to pass it on to you for any additional closing remarks. Uh, I think uh, you, you captured it all, and I appreciate whenever it's everybody's time. Peter, Editor, Jesse, great job. And I uh, hope everybody will join us in the future for our next uh, installment of our webinar series from the transitioning from the bucket to the barrel. And, Helene, I'm not sure if we have a, a date set yet for our next one, but I know we're looking at sometime middle to late November. Um, yes, and there's also been um, some talk of a follow-up to um, this LCA Commons um, software, or open LCA software and um, LCA Commons as well. So stay okay. tuned. Um, I'll try to post that on the, the website um, as soon as possible. And yes, the, um, we are looking at a biomass uh, supply chain webinar for November. And if we're unable to achieve, um, air that in November, then we're definitely looking at December. Okay. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so right, much. Have a great afternoon. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, if everybody just be patient with me, I'm going to uh, put the link in for the continuing education credit into the chat window. And I'm also going to um, push it out. And like I mentioned, um, there seem to have been some, some problems earlier on an earlier webinar today. And please email me if you have any problems um, with your CEUs. And we'll get those. Um, get those problems resolved. There's my email, and I'm going to push it out. So thank you, everyone.